So for this internet exercise, I'm going to go back and look at Tesla and see how much variation in the market helps explain what's going on with Tesla's prices. So I'm going to go to Yahoo Finance. Uh, I'm going to search for Tesla. Uh, I'm going to go to the historical data. And with regards to this, we're going to change the dates. We want at least five years worth of data. And we're going to change the frequency to monthly. So I'm going to apply that. And we can keep historical prices. That's fine. You could also, you know, do dividends or just stock splits. So now I'm going to download the data. And now I'm going to do the same thing for SPY. This is an exchange traded fund that's pretty much like the S&P 500. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Historical data. Uh, this will be monthly. And five years. Apply. And then download. So I'm going to open up one of these files. So there's the Tesla data. And I also need to open up the SPY data. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the Tesla CSV. So now I just have one Excel file. All right, next step is we we'll want to calculate the monthly closing prices and calculate monthly percentage changes. So what I'm going to do is we'll keep the date for a minute. I'm going to do the adjust to close, get rid of this other data. So this is for Tesla, and then the other one would be for uh, the S&P 500. Actually, I'm in there already in that, so I swap those. So Tesla and SPY. So this will be equal to Tesla sheet. It's adjust to close. I will send that down. Next thing we're going to do is calculate monthly changes. So again, SPY and Tesla. So in order to do that, beginning in this column, or this row, excuse me, it's going to be equal to the SPY B3 divided by B2, then I'll subtract 1. That'll get me the monthly percentage changes. So let's just make that a percentage, send that down, drag that across, and then send that all the way down. So now I have my data for the percentage changes. I'll drag that there. So now... What I can do is first, let's create a scatter plot, make sure these things are indeed somewhat linked together linearly. So I'll insert recommended, uh, we'll do all chart, we'll do a scatter with the line here. And you kind of see it looks like it's all over the place. Um, Mostly because I highlighted those things. So what I can do is insert and pull the dates over as well. Let's see if we can get that cleaned up a little bit. So highlighting this data and try that again. Still giving me some result. Okay. All right. 
let's see if these things are related. So we're going to, you could do the, uh, let's go ahead and just do the regression. So what we will do is uh, data, data analysis, regression. So we do have labels. In this particular example, uh, for the input Y range, That is going to be, sorry about that. That's going to be the Tesla. And for next, we'll have the input, the X range. Explaining this is the market. Then we'll just click OK. This will be regression results. So you can see T stats kind of close. Um, with respect to SPY explaining what's going on with Tesla, it's not that perfect of a fit, but it's coefficient 0.87. Um, so then going back to this, try this again. So if I insert the chart. with the scatter. So we'll stick with the scatter. We'll just do that to prevent confusion. And then I can add that trend line. And then this is linear. Let's just do linear. And then more options. So I can set the intercept or not set the, let's put the equation R squared. Um, so I can see that that is indeed that equation. And it's not by any means perfect. Uh, it's pretty low R squared uh, in this particular case. But it kind of helps you see that Tesla, in my case, is not necessarily doing or following the market, which may or may not be a good thing depending on what you're trying to do with regards to the market.